point to the symptoms, and act like all we do is cut them off or disguise them or hide from them, that somehow they're going to get dealt with. But I want to level with you. Some of you here are from a different faith background, and you believe in something, and I don't want to knock on your creed. But if you're from a, a, like a faith background that I know is true, which is Jesus' redemptive word, you know, you know that Jesus has the power to release you from bondage. Come on, like if you're a Christian, you know Jesus has delivered you from things that you once were in, and you just be like, thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you're in here and you've got stuff in your life, Listen, Jesus has the power to deliver you from bondage. He has the power to heal you. He has the power to give you hope and freedom and a new future. So don't count yourself out today. And what I love about the scripture that we're about to get into, we're going to dive into about Peter, is that Peter, although he was screwed up, although he made bad decisions, <laughs> he was so loved by God. He was so cared for by God. And it was actually God's love that caused him to overcome. So here's what I want to do. I want to jump into Peter's story. If some of you know it, this is going to be seven. In the Greek, it means completion. The scripture is saying that you can fall over and over and over again. And he says, but the righteous rise again. You can fall over and over again, but if you get back up and you let God forgive you, you can start over. It's the wicked that stay down in calamity. See, the only person that's going against you is you. Because God is for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I didn't know somebody died. Is, 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 are you guys here? <laughs> I'm not I'm preaching truth. Thank you. <laughs> yes. There is forgiveness. Stop looking through the root. Your past is not no, defined. God does. Notice when Peter goes fishing, right? There's six other people that follow him. Here's a leadership principle. Some of you are called to leadership. And you don't realize that you can still disciple people in the wrong direction. They're in a boat, fishing. They're supposed to be out doing God's work. Some of you in here are leaders, and you're claiming your old profession, and you're flirting with the idea of being what you're called to be. I just need to call it out right now. If you are a leader in here, disregard your old profession. <coughs> Take on the new identity that God has given you. You're called to be a fisher of men. Yeah. I don't know why God likes this dude. <laughs> Peter's messed up. He's jacked up. He's insecure. He thinks way too highly of himself. He's ambition for he's ambitious for the wrong reasons. His motives are off. He's a loser. And I was even asking that as I was preparing this. I was like, God, why do you love Peter? You know, there's a, there's a story. Um, it was like eight years ago. I had become a Christian. I was a Christian for a few years, and I was invited to go on a cruise ship with people I know I probably should have gone with. And I went, and I made some stupid decisions, and I remember driving in the van with everybody feeling like horrible about what I had done. It's the Holy Spirit that did me. I was convicted. I knew better. And so I'm driving, and I remember just under my breath muttering, God, could you just send somebody to pray for me? So one of the girls in the back said, I heard these so we pulled over, and I started walking towards one of the convenience stores that we pulled over at. And as I'm walking, I see this priest walking on my side. I look at him like, Father? He goes, this is just like, I'm not Catholic, but this is kind of cool. I was just asking God about it. Anyways, hey, I made a bad decision. I, I did something I know I should do. Well, what'd you do? So I start confessing this stuff, and he looks at me. Not with shame. Not with discipline. Can I be honest with you? I think the look that Jesus was giving Peter it wasn't that of disappointment. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that of anger or frustration. I think he looked at me with hope. That's good, right? And as he looked at me, this man placed his hand on me and he started to pray for me. He just started to pray God's love over me. And I started to weep. And he started to weep. And this man's in his head. He's an old head. I said to him afterwards, I said, can you answer one simple question for me? So yeah, sure. I said, why does God love us? He looked at me and said, son, I've been in ministry for 50 years. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That was one of the most refreshing answers I ever received. Love is a choice. It's not something that presses its beliefs on you just because it makes you. It lets you choose for yourself. A woman and a man will say, I do because they both choose to be married. If 
if you want to be in a relationship, you have got to choose him. But just remember, he chose you first. He chose you first. And if you're willing to accept him and what he did, you'll be forgiven. You'll be given a new hope, a second chance, and your failures are no more. And your present failures are no more. And your future failures are no more. Doesn't mean you're not going to fail. It just means every time you do, you know you're forgiven. So you get back up and you keep going. You live through the windshield. Some of you are Christian here. You have not been practicing living through the windshield. So I've got three calls today. If you could just bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to get a pulse for what's going on in you in the heart of every person. This is just you and God. I know there's people in the room, but right now it's just you and the Lord. Maybe you've been looking through the rearview mirror and you have let your failures define you instead of God. In a minute. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank <laughs> you. 